Hey, it's Connor from Gunroom TV. If your gun looks a bit like this at the moment, it's probably because you watched our deep dive disassembly video and are wondering how to get your gun back together. So stay tuned and we'll take you through it step by step. So if you watched our disassembly video, you see that the last thing we took apart is also the first thing we're gonna put back together today, which is the stock. Hopefully you followed my instructions and you made careful note of the writing that was on your shims before you took them apart. If you're not too sure which way they all went, then you can check your owner's manual for more information. The best way to reassemble this is to start with the stock and by sliding the shim onto the stock there. Once that's on there, you can then slide this onto the gun. It may take a little bit of work to get the holes lined up, but once they do, they'll all go together. Now you'll see this gap here, this will close up once we um, tighten the bolt in the back of the stock. The next thing to do, and this can be tricky, is to refit this serrated washer. Put it on your finger like this and then tilt the gun onto the washer, dropping it on there. Then take your nut and pop it into the socket. It helps if you have a nut retaining socket, but I don't here, so this may take me a couple of goes. You will want to have a look at where you're putting that nut because if you drop it, it's going to be very annoying. As you tighten this nut up, what you will see is the gap closing here at the wrist of the gun. Don't do this up too tightly. It's a nylock nut and will hold itself. Once you see that gap close up and the wrench start to be, become firm to turn, leave it there. Next thing to do is to reinstall the butt plate. I recommend placing the butt plate on first and then pushing one screw through until it stops. Once you're there, take your number two Phillips screwdriver and start screwing it in. Don't push too hard at this point because if you do, you run the risk of cross-threading the stock. The stock is plastic and if you do ruin it, you'll have to take some fairly uh, drastic measures in order to get a thread back in there. This can be filling it with epoxy and um, re-drilling re and re-screwing something in, or you may have to get a new stock if you've really bugged it up. And that's your stock reassembled. Moving on from the stock, the next thing I want to install is the shell latch here. Now, in our disassembly video, you would have seen that along with the shell latch, you had the pin, which is the hinge for the latch, and another smaller roll pin, which secures the main pin in. You want to work with the port facing towards you here. Pop the shell latch in, ensuring that the button protrudes through there. And once you line the holes up at the top, you should be able to see where the pin needs to drop through. So line those up and push the pin in by hand. Do not hammer this pin in. If you need to hammer it, it's not aligned properly. I'm just going to use a pick here to push it all the way home. And it will come to a stop. Once it's there, we'll need to drive this roll pin in. There is a bit of a technique with roll pins, so bear with me. Roll pins generally have a rounded side and a sharper side. You want to make sure that the rounded side goes in first. Now, depending on what sort of port cut on your gun, you may be able to drive it in from this side, but if you have to drive it in from the other side, be very, very careful. Place it gently in the hole, and you're gonna to want to just sit it there and give it a couple of light taps with the mallet. Once you've started it in, take an appropriately sized punch and drive it the rest of the way through. You want the pin to be just below flush of outside of the receiver. Once you get close to the receiver, stop and check your progress. If you mess this up, you are going to scratch the gun. So the last thing to do is to replace this bolt release button. Place it on there, it self-locates onto the bolt uh, release. And then we're going to screw this Allen bolt in. Now this is one that we replaced for a higher quality one earlier. As I said, the original one does tend to strip quite easily. If you're still using the original bolt, you will want to put a bit of Loctite on this. However, if you've replaced it for a longer bolt as we have here, there'll be no need to do so. The next thing to do is to uh, reassemble the bolt. Now I'm gonna do both the bolt and the ejector in this segment because they're both fairly short and easy things to do. 
All we removed from the bolt last time was the firing pin. Now, there are four components that you should have sitting on your table here. You should have an O-ring, the firing pin retaining pin, the actual firing pin itself, and the firing pin spring. This O-ring needs to go onto the firing pin before the spring. It's a little buffer. Then, the firing pin spring. Ensuring that the cam pin is orientated correctly, you can insert the firing pin in from the rear of the bolt. Looking down through this hole here, as you push on the back of the firing pin, you should be able to see as it goes past the point where it locks in. Once you're there, pop the retaining pin in and give it a firm push. This is to ensure that the O-ring seats against the bolt carrier body. Once you release the firing pin, you'll notice that it doesn't come all the way out as it's being retained by the retaining pin. The next thing to do with the bolt and bolt carrier assembly is something that can be quite tricky, or just a little fiddly. We need to reinsert the bolt carrier into the recoil spring guide with its recoil spring. A good way to help yourself is to insert something up the back of the recoil spring assembly to stop it from popping out as you compress it. Here I'm using this socket and extension bar. Once you've pulled it back about as much as you need to, grab the rest of the bolt and bolt head assembly and pop it in there, carefully letting the recoil spring drop. Once you're at this stage, it's important to make sure that the recoil spring is properly aligned and not kinked at the end. This entire unit is now reassembled and ready to go back in the gun. The next thing we're going to reassemble is the ejector. From the disassembly, you have four parts remaining. You'll have the plunger, the spring, the ejector, and the retaining roll pin. We'll start by installing this plunger. With the barrel in this orientation, the short bit of the plunger goes towards the back. You'll notice this little collar here. So place that in its place and draw it back. Next, we're going to place the ejector spring in on top of the plunger that we just installed. Guide it in with a pick. It will find its own way to the top of the plunger. Next, we're going to install the ejector. Again, pop that in making sure the hook of the ejector is facing in towards the chamber of the gun. You may need a little bit of persuasion. Be careful not to chip the end of the ejector as you do this. We're just getting it past that hole on the back of the chamber that we showed you earlier. I'll flip it back over and show you that in a second. So it's this hole here that we're trying to get the ejector past. Now, take your roll pin and going in through the top or the bottom, I prefer the top in this instance, get it started in and just give it a tap. Once that's in there, you need to hold the ejector back with one hand and finish tapping it in the rest of the way with the other. This does help if you're on a workbench or if you have a vice. Once you've captured the ejector, use a punch to finish driving the roll pin in all the way in. Last thing we want to do on the barrel is reinsert the gas piston. Just align it and pop it in. If you've bared with us this far, you're doing pretty well. I suggest you get a cup of tea before attempting this next bit because we're about to start working on the trigger mechanism. This can be fiddly, so take your time and make sure you don't lose anything. We're going to start off by reinserting the hammer. Now, if you remember last time when I showed you, the two hammer struts go in either side onto these pins on the hammer. 
With the hammer facing forward like this, the struts should be assembled so that they point upwards, like so. Holding them in place, align them, then slip the little plastic top hat that came off with them on it, with the collar facing back towards where the hammer spring is going to go. Then take the hammer spring, which is the biggest out of the three you'll have left after disassembling the trigger mechanism and place it on there. Take the trigger bow and disconnect your assembly and just slot it in there for now. And this is where it starts to get fiddly. Whilst pinching all of that together, you need to drop in and align the hammer spring with its little seat. You may find you need to take the trigger bow out and drop it down and pass the hammer over that. Push the whole lot back and into the mechanism. Once you have the hammer struts inside the trigger mechanism, even if they're not in place, that will hold them in position so that they don't fall apart on you. At this point, you want to take the cocking indicator slash button spring and pop that in its place just there. And then the button follows in shortly. Let's leave it sitting there for now, because what we need to do now is compress the hammer down into the cocking indicator slash button, and then we're going to pass the odd shape pin in through the back, hopefully all in one motion. and that will retain all those components in place for the moment. Pop the hammer pin in from the back, so there's oddly shaped one here, it will only go in one way. Now that the hammer's retained, we're gonna pop the pin in here for the trigger bow. That goes in from the left hand side of the gun, like this. Once you're in this position here, you've got the hammer secured, you've got a cocking piece correctly engaged by the hammer tooth, and the hammer pin in. It should be plain sailing from here. Take your trigger bow pin and pass it in from the left side of the trigger guard. You don't need to force this, but you will need to manoeuvre the trigger bow around just to get it into the correct place. It should come through with no force required whatsoever. The last thing for us to reassemble here is the lifter and plunger assembly. Now something we didn't show you because it normally stays in the trigger guard is this little guy here. If you find you've got him left over after all this, don't worry too much. He came from this position just here. He drops in there. It can stay there for the moment. First of all, we need to assemble the lifter with the uh, lifter tooth. It has a slot down the middle. Just slide that just in between there. It's this little hole here that we're trying to engage. There's no positive retention for this, just align them by eye for best, as best you can for now. This little pin here drops in from the inside of the lifter. The easiest thing to do from here is keeping the lifter orientated like this. Flip the trigger guard round and just pass it gently into position here. Once you're there, that's in no danger of falling out, but you do want to make sure that it doesn't get caught under here because we're gonna have extreme difficulty reassembling it if it is. So make sure it's above that little ledge there. Just hold it there for the moment. This little D-shaped piece of metal needs to go in next. Just pop that in there. You can put this down and assemble the lifter plunger and spring. This is another fiddly bit coming up, so just bear with us. Pull the lifter forward as far as it will possibly go. The further forward you can get this, the less spring pressure you're going to have to deal with in this next step. You need to place the spring on there, compress the plunger as best you can, and hook it into the lifter from there. Once you're at this stage, you're going to need your lifter pin. This is the one with the groove on one end of it and the head on the other. The head is going to go on this side of the trigger guard. So what we do from here is compress the plunger spring and plunger 
align the holes and pass the pin through. Now, I generally find it easiest at this point to use a punch to align everything first. So from my set of punches, I'm gonna select one that is as close to the size of the hinge pin as I can find. Compress the lifter down and pass that punch through. Once I've done this, I could then take the lifter pin, match up to the punch, and then use the pin to push the punch out. This will keep everything aligned as you go through. And it will make this step very, very easy. Now you're at this point, you need to put the D-clip back on. Now there is a bit of a technique to doing this correctly and without bending these. You need to try and locate one of those grooves we saw earlier on the side of this pin. You can have a look for one of those now. So it's across there. So I'm going to compress the lifter assembly together to give myself a bit more room to work with. Take the flat bit of the spring and hook it into that groove. And once it's there, you want to roll your finger over, pushing that clip up and over the pin like so. You'll hear it click into position. Next thing for us to do is to reassemble the safety. If you followed it along with us on our disassembly video, you should be left with your safety button and the safety button spring. The safety plunger should still be inside the trigger guard. However, it may have fallen out and we've removed it for you here to show you how it goes back in. First thing you need to do is to cock the trigger mechanism. Hopefully you've reassembled it correctly at this point, otherwise this will become extremely difficult. Cock the hammer, being careful not to pull the trigger at any point during this stage. You don't want to drop the hammer on the trigger frame. Pass the safety into your chosen side. Here I'm just setting it up for a right-handed shooter. Pull the lifter up and drop the safety plunger in. Once the safety plunger's in, pop the spring in behind it. Now, Take your punch and press that spring in as far as it will go. Once it's in there, do this Allen bolt up until you can just feel it start to tighten up on your punch. At this point, pull your punch out and the spring will be retained. From there, you can carry on doing this bolt up. So, let's put the gun back together. First things first, I like to start by putting the bolt in. It's the most logical step. This is something that requires lubrication with a light oil. That's not a WD-40, but a lubricant, like a specifically made gun oil. Once you've gotten to this point, we can pop the bolt handle in. Now, if you remember, what we need to do is push the bolt head back until we reveal the notch right there. Once we're there, we can pass the little the bolt handle in using the bit that looks like a key to fit in that notch. In it goes. Next, trigger guard. Now make sure that the hammer is cocked before we insert this. Insert it with the back first and then as you rock it forward, push the bolt release in, and this will help you drop the entire assembly down into place. Once that's there, visually inspect the pinhole to make sure that everything is aligned before we start putting the trigger pin, the trigger assembly pin in. Pop it in and try and get it started by hand if you can. On new guns like this one, it will require some tapping, using a soft faced mallet preferably, and now I'm gonna switch over to the rubber side to avoid marking the gun. And that is in place. Next, we're gonna put the handguard and the barrel back on. Press your button and lock the bolt back. This will make this next bit a lot easier for you. Take your handguard and your barrel and pass the handguard over the gas system. 
From here, we're going to insert the magazine tube and recoil assembly into the handguard and guide the barrel assembly into the gun. If you have any difficulty inserting, inserting the barrel assembly, it will probably be because the magazine tube is hitting the gas assembly. Pull the handguard forward and just make sure that that's fully aligned and inside the gas assembly. And then you can pull your handguard back down. From here, you can pass the rest of the barrel assembly back and it's in position. Once you can see no gap between the rib and the receiver. From here, take your follower and put your follower into the magazine tube, followed by your magazine spring. If you have an aftermarket extended tube, your spring may be cut on one end. If it is, the cut end needs to be towards the end of the magazine extension and your nicely coiled end should be sitting in the back of your follower. Push that as far as it goes until you hear the follower hit home at the bottom of the magazine tube. Take your magazine extension, pass it over. Some people have some difficulty at this stage, especially if you have an aftermarket magazine extension because the spring may buckle or try and run away from you as you're inserting it. My best advice for you here is to cup your hand around the exposed magazine spring and support it as you push the extension tube down and onto the magazine tube. Once you've got it to this point, just simply start threading it onto the gun. You'll notice I'm holding it by the receiver because until this magazine tube is fully installed, the barrel and hand guard will move around on you. Thank you for tagging along with us on this journey through the insides of the Beretta 1301. This has been Connors with Gunroom TV and I hope to see you soon.